Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Vegetable Oils and Processing. In this lecture, we will be discussing about a manufacturing process of a, a few types of specific vegetable oils and then a few common steps of processing of vegetable oils we are going to see. However, before going into the details of today's lecture, we will be having a kind of recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture. We uh, started with the definitions of uh, oils where we had edible oils and then essential oils, right. Then we see that uh, edible oils are nothing but uh, mixtures of uh, long chain fatty esters, something like uh, glycerides, etc. And uh, the derivatives such as like you know uh, long chain fatty alcohols, something like a glycerin or glycerol. So, these are nothing but the oils, uh, edible oils especially, right. So, these oils are not only used for the uh, edible purpose for cooking etc., but also used for uh, industrial applications also several of industrial applications are also using so many of vegetable oils something like uh, coconut oil, almond oil etc. Right? So, then essential oils are nothing but you know uh, a mixture of uh, aromatics which are uh, used in cosmetics, pharmaceuticals etc. Right? And then we started discussing about the uh, chemical composition of these oils, right? Edible oils you can take something like you know uh, glyceride, something like uh, something like this. So, now here these uh, radicals, long chain free fatty acid radicals whatever are there, they not necessarily be same, they would be different R1, R2, R3 would be different, right. And then most of these uh, compounds are unsaturated, that means there would be double bonds, right. If the number of uh, double bonds increases, then what happened? The melting point of oil decreases and then reactivity with oxygen or air increases, right? Or uh, rancidity takes place. So, for uh, edible fats etc., rancidity is not good. So, then you what you prefer to have? You prefer to have a saturated, this uh, R1, R2, R3 etc., you prefer to be saturated, okay. Even if they are unsaturated, there are some industrial applications like you know uh, in paints and uh, varnishes, what you do? You use uh, unsaturated uh, uh, compounds or whatever these fatty acids etc. are there, they use them as a vehicles or the liquids or solvent which would be carrying the pigments to form the paints or varnishes, right. So, these kind of applications are also there if unsaturated ones are there. However, uh, it is better to make these uh, bonds saturated from applications point of view if required, then uh, two best approaches are hydrogenation which is uh, catalytic activity or occurs in the presence of catalyst only at provided uh, required temperature and pressure. But there are also some kind of approach like uh, antioxidants, okay. So, this is the uh, basic uh, introduction of the entire uh, so called oils and fats industry that we uh, how the oils are being produced and, and how the processing or purification of uh, uh, crude vegetable oils usually been done in the industries. That introductory part, this is how we have 
uh, you know understood. Then uh, we started discussing about the technical components of the oil extraction processes. Then we realized that there are uh, approaches, mechanical approaches to extract the oils from the vegetable seeds and then there is also another approach called solvent extraction. Then followed by a purification steps etc. These things we have seen and then these steps you know uh, how they occur a kind of generalized approach, generalized oil production and purification flow chart we have seen right. So, that we going to discuss now again as a recapitulation right. But after that what we will be doing? We will be discussing production of a specific types of a vegetable oils etcetera we are going to discuss in today's lecture ok. So, before going into the production of specific type of vegetable oils, we will have a recapitulation of the generalized flow chart which provides you know information how the oil is being extracted either by mechanical process or by solvent extraction process or both followed by the purification right and then we get into the new topics of today's lecture. Now, we quickly look at the generalized flow chart for the production of oils which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So, what we do? We take vegetable oil seeds, then by mechanical means we clean them and do the dehulling. After cleaning and dehulling, we pass them through cracking rolls. They can be corrugated uh, rolls or you know smooth rolls, whatever it depends on the type of oil right that you are processing. Why, why do we do that? So, that we can get the flaked seeds. Why do this? Uh, why do we do uh, flaking of the seeds, why cannot we take directly after drying? So, because we have to digest them, we have to cook them in a digester using the steam, right. So, when you do the digestion with using the steam, if you have the flaked seeds uh, in a 0 0.25 to 0 0.35 mm size, then what happens that uh, permeation of the steam into the seeds takes place easily and then cooking would be done effectively. Right. So, uh, around 100 parts of seeds if you take, flake seeds if you take, 5 to 10 parts of water you take and then you uh, do the cooking in a digester using the steam at around 105 to 120 degree centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes. Right. So, then whatever the mixture or meal that you get that you process through an expeller so that to get a crushed crude oil and then whatever the cake is there that cake you get and then you use it as a feed for the animal, right. Whatever the oil that you get which is crude after mechanical uh, process, this is whatever we have done this is nothing but the mechanical process all, right, mechanical expeller process. So, all these steps are only mechanical steps are there. So, this is known as the mechanical expelling process. So, from this mechanical extraction process whatever the crude oil that you get that you do you know purification by alkali treatment where you try to remove the foods by centrifugation right. The clear oil you further take it to the adsorption column so that to remove some further impurities are there or not whereas the foods you take to the soap manufacturing. After the adsorption clear oil if it has still some impurities of the you know hulls or flakes etc., vegetable seed flakes etc. are still remaining in small quantities they will be removed in a rotary drum you know filter press. How this works etc. that we have already seen. So, after this process you get the finished oil right. So, now this is the mechanical method followed by the purification if you wanted to do the solvent extraction which is explained here uh, in this part of the flow chart. After the cracking whatever the flake seeds are there that you can take to a extractor right if you are doing only solvent extraction process right. As we mentioned this mechanical and then solvent extraction processes they can also be done com in combination. In fact, most of the oil industries nowadays they are doing in combination so that you know uh, yield of oil quantity is increased right. So, under such conditions what you do? 
cake whatever you are uh, taking as an animal feed, if the quantity of the oil is sufficiently high in, the, in this uh, cake more than 5 percent or something like that, that cake also you mix along with the you know uh, flake seeds here and then uh, take it to the extraction column. How it works etc. we have already explained. So, to this extraction column what you do you need to give a solvent because it is a solvent extraction the solvent is required, hexane solvent in general used. Of course, there are other uh, solvents are also possible, but hexane is the most uh, efficient one. So, then after this process whatever the wet meal is there that you take to the steps of solvent removal, flash evaporation and then vacuum stripping column etc. in order to recover the solvent from the wet meal. Once you recover the solvent from the wet meal, that recovered solvent you can reuse as a you know solvent to the extraction column by recycling it. Okay. Whereas, the uh, meal after the solvent removal is there, so that you can take it to the toaster or uh, desolventizer right or you can take it as a animal feed or you can use for the other purposes as also right. So, from this vacuum stripping column what you get? You get finished solvent extracted oil from the bottom from the top you get the solvent right. So, this oil again it has to be processed for the purification steps as explained here. This finished oil, so finished solvent extracted oil that may be containing some amount of solvent also, may be stresses, may be only a few uh, percentages, right, less than 1 or 2 percent, something like that. But however, solvent is there, so that one you call it as micella. That micella again you take it uh, along with the you know oil that is coming from the mechanical method and then do the purification steps. Now, in this lecture we are going to see uh, in detail about a, a few types of a vegetable oils production, especially let us say here we are calling expeller, how does it work, what are the different types of expellers etc. are there, it is necessary to understand. We do not go into the all the details of expellers, but we take a sufficient uh, details so that you know we could understand what, what does mean by expeller and how does it uh, required for the oil industry. Similarly, extractor also we see for a particular type of vegetable oil, we see in detail about the extraction column and then purification of the solvent etc. again. So, let us start with cotton seed oil extraction. Here again two methods are there, mechanical method and then solvent extraction method, both the methods we see and then uh, we see details of a, a component, important component that are involved in these processes. Okay. So, in the mechanical method by screening and aspiration you can uh, do the cleaning of the cotton seeds. These cotton seeds usually you know black in color, but that may be containing hull as well as the lints also may be there. Right? So, these lints are very rich in alpha cellulose may be more than 80 percent. So, that can be used for some other application, so you cannot throw them also. Even the hulls are also used for different purpose like you know roughage in the animal feed etc. So, whatever the cotton seeds including the lins, hulls and then uh, black seed all of them are having certain market value. So, you cannot afford to waste any of them, right. So, for that process for because of such reasons cleaning is also very essential and important step in the cotton seed oil extraction, right. Once the cleaning has been done. The removal of lint is done by passing the seeds through a series of linter machines where the uh, lints are being removed. These machines usually work on saw and rib principle. Each series of linters removes different lengths of uh, uh, lints which may be designated as a first cut and second cut lint something like that. The lint cuts are aspirated and air conveyed because these are very uh, less in weight, so then it is better to do the aspiration and then air conveying to separate from the uh, you know to separate beaters or cleaners. This cleaners will also remove the dirt and hull fragments from the lint. So, now after this step uh, you get almost like a clear clean lint you get which is rich in alpha cellulose that you can use for the other applications. So, after this process uh, where the lint is also been removed, hull it has been uh, hulled and then dirt also removed. So, then you have a clean delinted seeds 
which are nothing but black seeds that uh, main portion black in color and that main part of the uh, seed is whatever there that black seeds you get. They are usually cut as split in bar type huller freeing the meats from hulls if at all there are uh, meats of course they would be and then these are further separated from meats by screening and aspiration. Screening how it is done etc. those things we have uh, discussed in the first week of the course where we were talking about the unit operation. So, we are not getting into the details of them. They are also part of our different subjects not part of this particular subject. Thus, removed hulls are cleaned of attached meat particles in a beater. Removed hulls are sent to storage that can be used as roughage in animal feeds. So, out of three parts of the cotton seeds that is cotton seed, black seed, hull and then lint. Lint is separated which is used for the alpha cellulose so ap appropriate uh, applications are there. Hulls are used as roughage in animal feeds. And then meats are rolled into thin flakes so that you know you get 0 0.25 to 0 0.35 mm thick to make them easily permeable to steam in cooking operation. So, digester step whatever we have seen you know in uh, it has to be uh, digested whatever the seeds are there flakes of the seeds have to be cooked in, in the presence of steam at around uh, 15 minutes and then at around 110 degrees centigrade. So, that steam permeation into the seed has to be taken place properly. So, for that purpose these flakes are essential or the flake shape of the seeds are essential rather the flakes. Okay. They are next uh, cooked and then conditions. What do you mean by conditioning? Conditioning is nothing but uh, in these seeds usually proteins would also be there. Right? If these proteins are not separated before the uh, expelling process or pressing process, the extraction of oil may not be uh, sufficiently good enough or it will not be effective, it will not be economically feasible. Right? So, that much you know protein contents may be there in some of the cases up to 40 to 50 percent protein contents may be there in the oil seeds which may not be aiding for the oil production. So, they have to be separated. So, what are the steps are there depending on the you know uh, percentage of the proteins that are present. If the percentage is high then you have to do the digestion and then uh, drying etc. those kind of steps. Right? If the percentage of protein is less around 5-6 percent only then you can simply dry them and then do the required you know uh, expelling process or pressing in the expellers etc. that you have to do. So, those processes are nothing but the conditioning. So, these are uh, next cooked or conditions in horizontal cookers at 110 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes before the expression, before the expression or uh, pressing the seeds to extract the oil before that one you have to do. Expression is to rupture the oil grains to precipitate the phosphatides to detoxify the gossy pole. Gossy pole is nothing but a kind of a pigment which is very toxic, so it has to be removed and to coagulate proteins. Right? In the direct solvent extraction, meats are conditioned before flaking. Now, we are talking about the mechanical ones. So, if you do only solvent extraction, the meats are conditioned before the flaking. If you are doing the mechanical process, after uh, flaking you do the required conditioning. Then horizontal cookers are generally in which are integrated with expellers. In pre-press plants, they are supplemented with a stacked cooker for additional uh, heating capacity. Then moisture is frequently raised to 12 to 14 percent and then gradually reduced to 5 to 7 percent in these units. Most of the oil from conditioned cotton seed is pre-pressed in mechanical uh, screw press. These presses are single or double warm shafts revolving inside a heavy perforated barrel. We are going to schematically uh, discuss them in the next slide where we will be having uh, you know cut view of the expellers as well. Okay? and capable of exerting pressure up to 11.7 to 13.8 mega Pascals. Oil removed by these presses is screened, cooled, filtered and stored for uh, refining. Approximately 74 percent of all cotton seed is processed by the mechanical methods. Additional 18 percent is processed by pre-pressing with solvent extraction and then 8 percent only by direct solvent extraction. Now, we see how the pressing of the uh, 
flaked seeds takes place in expeller to get the or to extract the oil from the oil seeds. Okay? We are taking a twin motor super dough expeller. It is having two motors that is the reason it calls twin motor super dough expeller. If you see cutway of this particular expeller then you can realize here. So now here in this expeller we are going to discuss all the steps of conditioning, extraction of oil by expression in two steps and then collection of the cake etc. all those things we can see in a diagram here and then clearly understand. That diagram cut view of the expeller is provided here, right? We have material inlet here, okay? So the material is a solid material, transportation of the solid material in a horizontal column is very difficult. So best option is the screw conveyor. So the solid material that you take here, so that screw conveyor it rotates like this. So when the screws are moving, then what happens? You know that material passes uh, along with the screws and then discharges to the other level, right? So because this is whatever the central tube kind of thing is there, that rotates actually, that rotates to that one, the screws or you know blades kind of things are provided like this, helical screws are provided like this, okay? So, so when the uh, rod rotates, these helical screws will also rotate and then uh, correspondingly material passes to the next level. In this one there is a conditioning uh, section also, if required the conditioning something like you know uh, whatever uh, protein coagulation etc, drying etc, those things are required that can also be done, okay? So once the conditioned material whatever is there that comes to a uh, downspout from where it enters vertical barrel. So this material comes here into the vertical barrel. So this is nothing but this particular section is vertical barrel, right? So this is a perforated one, right? So the material when it comes here, right? The vertical motor operates and then this one comes down gradually and then presses the material like this. When the material is pressed, here the material is nothing but the flaked uh, seeds. So when these are being uh, uh, pressed here, they will be undergoing expression and then you know uh, whatever the oil is there that is coming out. That oil comes out through the perforated region of the barrel. These barrels whatever vertical or horizontal both of them are perforated one. Through this perforation portion of the perforated portion of the barrel you know that oils comes out and then that oils you know gradually drains into the bottom and then gets discharged. Now here in the vertical barrel approximately 50 percent of oil is extracted by the uh, vertical pressing. So but while this pressing conditions are such a way that the continuously the remaining cake which is having 50 percent of uh, you know oil still containing in a continuous manner without reducing the pressure that would be coming and then entering the horizontal barrel is shown, shown here, this horizontal barrel. This is also perforated one. Now this horizontal motor will operate so that the uh, material whatever is coming here that would be pressed and then crushed and then uh, whatever the oil is there, that oil passes out of the uh, barrel through the perforated area, the, this whatever the red dots are there, they are nothing but the you know oil coming out you know through the perforation. Here in the vertical ones you know like bar they are shown because they are cut view, okay? So the oils are coming like this. So those oils again after this uh, second step pressing in horizontal barrel whatever the oil is there that comes out and then mixes with the oil that has been extracted in the vertical barrel mixed with that one and then comes out as a oil discharge. Now by this step almost like you know uh, remaining uh, oil whatever pr was present in the cake that also been removed. So almost 90, by 90, more than 90 percent of the oil is being removed and then whatever the pressed cake or de-oiled cake is there that is taken as a discharge as a uh, cake from the other side, okay? This again depending on its oil content, if the oil content is still high, it can be refed here in this process and then redo or this can be you know processed in a solvent extraction uh, method in combination method if you are using and then you know ex further extraction of oil from the cake will also be taking place if still it is having oil content and that, that is optional, okay? Right? So now here this is called as a uh, twin motor, so vertical motor and then horizontal motor are there. 
Now here this comes at certain speed and then uh, top or top uh, shaft or top vertical motor operates at a certain speed and then horizontal motor also operates at certain speed and then at what speed the material inlet material is coming they all have to be properly engineering way calculated and then whatever the discharge rates are there they should also be calculated according this operating of the speed of the vertical and then horizontal motor and then screw conveyor has to be you know maintained. So, they are all part of the engineering calculation of the design. So, that we are not going into the uh, details of uh, those things because that is not part of the course. Right? So, now this is about how twin motor super dough expeller works. Right? So, such kind of expellers are used in the cotton seed, they are also used for the extraction of other types of vegetables as well. Okay? So, one commercial expeller is shown here, Anderson expeller. So, now you can see here exactly the same thing. So, here is a vertical motor and then here it is the horizontal motor, the material is being come, uh, coming here and then being crushed and then this is nothing but your uh, screw conveyor to take the material inlet and then it is also provided with the conditioning vessel. Right? The oil would be collected from the bottom here whereas the discharge cake would be collected from the bottom here. Okay? So, whatever the things we discussed in the previous slide, the same thing have been presented here as a text for understanding. So, here three steps are there, one is the cleaning or uh, preparation of the material then followed by the conditioning based on the percentage of the protein followed by final extraction of the oil by twin motor expeller. So, all steps we are going to discuss here again. Preliminary preparation of materials, oil seeds to be pressed are cleaned to remove foreign objects, then hulls or shells are removed, thus separated oil bearing kernels or whole seed are then ground rolled or cracked to suitable size for pressing. By conditioning equipment which may be integrated with expeller in general, moisture content and temperature of prepared material are adjusted. Now, the second step is conditioning depending on the protein content of the material, the steps are varying. Right? If you have a high protein content material or the oil seeds that you take after the you know uh, preparation of it, if you have the more protein in the oil seeds that has to be removed otherwise extraction would not be efficient. Okay? Oil seeds with high protein content example like cotton seed that just we have seen should be cooked to coagulate this protein in order to permit efficient extraction. Material is cooked using a cooker vessel which maintains the raw material for a prescribed amount of time at definite moisture content and temperature. So, all these things like you know uh, moisture content, temperature, etc., they should be optimized and then that depends on material to material in general. This cooking coagulates the protein and frees the oil for efficient pressing subsequently. After cooking normally which takes place at a moisture content of 10 to 12 percent, you have to make sure that the raw material must be dry to 2 to 3 percent of moisture content only. Then you allow this material to the expeller where both the vertical and then horizontal extractions are taking place. So, that would be the you know required thing. Right? If the materials are having low content, low protein content, then only drying is sufficient. Something like you know, uh, like you know, like copra. Copra is nothing but the processed uh, raw material from the coconut to get the coconut oil. That we are going to discuss anyway, right? So these materials usually have the high oil and high fiber composition. So under such conditions, if you do the drying itself, is sufficient. You do the drying, then you do the extraction by using the expellers. Drying is accomplished in horizontal cylindrical vessels installed as separate units or mounted as part of expeller. This drying is carried out as rapidly as possible to eliminate degrading of the oil caused by maintaining it at high temperatures over prolonged periods of the times. So, often it is not good that you uh, drying the material for long time and then uh, high temperature because when you do that one degradation of the oil in general takes place. 
what do you mean by degradation of the oil? So, when you prolong period you expose to the atmosphere, so some kind of rancidation may etc. takes place. Because those conditioned materials are already dried enough and dried at high temperature. So, moisture content would be less, oil content would be exposed more time to the air or oxygen etc. then a rancidation may take place. After cooking and drying process, temperature of material is carefully controlled in expeller press conditioner before pressing. Right? How the pressing occurs that just we have seen, the material leaves the conditioner and passes with no loss of temperature into the downspout of the expeller press where it receives the first pressing in the vertical barrel. So, no loss of temperature is required that is the reason in general the material inlet section is also provided with the conditioning section. This initial pressing removes approximately 50 percent of the available oil. In an uninterrupted flow under continuous pressure conditions, the material leaving the vertical barrel enters the horizontal barrel. After passing through horizontal barrel, it is finally discharged as cake with a residual oil reduced as low as 3 percent depending on of course type of the material and then operating conditions as well. Discharge cake is in chip form and that can be ground into meal. Thus obtained crude oil contains small amount of settlings or foods which are removed and then used in the soap manufacturing industries followed by uh, this removal can be done by settling or screening followed by the final clarification by pumping through a filter press or rotary drum filter press. Separated foods are reworked continuously into the expeller, expeller press feed stream or can be pressed in a foods expeller press separately as well. Final filtered crude oil produced by the expeller press can be further processed as per the requirements whether you need to do hydrogenation or you need to do the anti-oxidation addition or you need to do the purification steps as we have discussed uh, already. Right? So, that was about extraction of uh, oil from the cotton seeds by using mechanical methods. Now, how to do the same thing using solvent extraction method that we are going to see. This method recovers up to 98 percent of cotton seed oil whereas only 90 to 93 percent from screw press expression alone. So, 5 percent, 5 to 8 percent is more here. Actually, soya bean which is having low oil content, but physical structure is particularly suited to solvent extraction. Okay? So, that is the reason you know the solvent extraction has been developed because soya beans the oil content is less and then if such when the oil content is less doing you know mechanical extraction may not be feasible. So, that that is the reason the solvent extraction method has been developed because the solvent can be recovered again and then recycled back. Okay? So, by this solvent extraction method if you do the extraction of oil from the soya bean you can get almost 98 percent or even higher oil yield. Right? So, once this solvent extraction method was developed for the soya bean because of its uh, physical structure as well as the oil content, the same has been found to be suitable for many other uh, oil industry is getting oil from the different sources. Okay? So, solvent extraction has assumed importance in virtually all vegetable oil recovery processes either alone or in combination with pre-pressing or mechanical methods. Okay? That is the importance of the solvent extraction method. In cotton seed oil extraction, hexane solvent is sprayed onto flakes in buckets moving horizontally in the extractor counter current to the hexane we have already seen, but once again we see uh, schematically this one. Hexane dissolving the oil is known as the micella. From this micella you recover the solvent and then reuse it and then crushed or solvent extracted finished oil you further do the hydrogenation etc. as per the requirement. This micella is pumped to the two effective operators in order to recover the solvent. In the first evaporator 
which is heated by the hot hexane vapor and steam, you know, um, some purification takes place. So, how this hot uh, hexane vapor and steam are coming? They are coming from the toasters. Toasters are nothing but desolventizer of the meal. Or actually, after the solvent extraction, whatever the wet meal you get. So, from here if you remove the solvent, that meal is going to be useful for the other purposes because it is very rich in the uh, protein. But the solvent whatever is we are calling it is also having you know oil, it is actually oil rich phase. All right. So, this oil rich phase with solvent is there whatever that is nothing but the micellar. This you do the purification to remove the solvent and then uh, finished oil you get here. Okay. So, for this removing of the uh, or recovery of the meal from the wet meal you have certain kind of toasters. Almost all cotton seed produced is used by edible oil processes for shortening margarine and salad or cooking oils purpose. Cake is broken or ground and used for cattle feed. Hulls provide roughage for the livestock feeding and then lintas which contain 70 to 85 percent alpha cellulose are utilized as cellulose sources of high purity in the textile industries to make the rayons or in the plastics industries or in the uh, paints and varnishes industries as lacquers or even in the explosives also it is used. Right? So, now you see hull, lint, seed all three components of a cotton seed are you know very essential. So, all of them are having certain applications. So, this cleaning and purification is also very essential step in the uh, in this particular oil production by cotton seeds. Schematically if you see the same thing here, so you have a extractor. To this extractor press cake is coming, press cake in the sense either you do the pressing of the seeds and then give them as a feed to the extractor or if you are using in combination with uh, mechanical methods whatever the cake that is coming from the uh, mechanical method where you get almost 90 to 90 percent or 80 percent of the oil extracted and then remaining 10 to 20 percent of oil only there in that cake. Let us say that is also essential so you cannot throw it. So, that you are processing so that cake is to be taken as a feed here either way. So, if you are doing only solvent extraction here what you do the seeds that you press it and then whatever the cakes are forming because of the pressing that you take into the extractor as a feed. So, these extractors you know taken here right and then solvent is being sprayed from the top. It is one of the representation only. So, other representation we have seen previously in the previous lecture. Okay, we are going to see one type, one different types of uh, uh, representation in the uh, next uh, vegetable oil production in this class itself, right? So here the extraction takes place. So when the extraction takes place, whatever the oil-rich phase with the solvent hexane is there. Here hexane solvent is used. So that is nothing but micellar. So, that is collected from the bottom and pumped to micellar storage tank, right? Whereas, the solvent rich phase plus some amount of oil and meal etcetera may be there. The solvent now here it is not pure one. So, that is also collected and then sent to desolventizer toaster to which you uh, providing energy either by the steam or by the hot NXN solvent or by both. If you are using single effective operator or do double effective operator, you can use either of the heat sources because in this evaporation actually this toaster is nothing but the evaporator. For that you need energy, that energy you can provide either by steam or using the hot NXN because NXN is already there. So, that can also be used for the heating purpose here in the evaporators, right? So, from here 
whatever the meal etc that you collect right which is uh, you know having little amount of oil also so that is taken to the meal storage fine so after uh, recovering the meal the next step is the from the micellar tank you take the micellar and then pump it to the purification steps here so you have the separator evaporator and separator etc so here in this step or the steps that are shown in the bottom primarily you are trying to purify the oil because this micellar is rich in oil plus some amount of a solvent or an exin is this so that solvent you are trying to evaporate by this evaporators here again right whatever the oil that is there so that oil you take to the oil stripper here you check the condition of the oil after the stripping of the solvent if that oil is of sufficient requirement or the solvent quantity is negligibly small so then that you can take it to the oil storage or otherwise you redo the process again until that uh, solvent in the oil reduces to the permissible limits okay whereas from the desolventizer toaster whatever the solvent after removing the meal and oil content and taking the meal storage whatever the remaining solvent is there that is taken to a condenser then from the condenser it is taken to the solvent separator and work tank which are two tanks are there so here the required solvent recovery is done that required uh, steps of solvent recovery after doing so that whatever the solvent is there so after scrubbing that solvent it is again sent back to the extractor as a reuse okay so here in the process of this extractions you know lot of steam may be there or vent vapors would be there which would be at high temperature so a kind of condenser or you know cooling is required so for that you know different types of condensers are you know vent condensers are provided here okay so now here again if you see solvent extraction followed by you know purification of the micella or separation of the micella into the oil and solvent the, those steps are there in addition to that one the solvent toaster step is also there okay so this is about the cotton seed oil production from the uh, solvent extraction method followed by the recovery of the solvent next is soya bean oil extraction preparation of soya bean seed differs from cotton seed preparation how it differs that we have see weighed and clean seeds are cracked between corrugated rolls to crush them then crushed seeds are conditions without significant change in moisture in a steak cooker or a rotary tube conditioner finally conditioned seeds are rolled to thin flakes having 0.25 to 0.35 mm thick then soya bean oil extraction by solvent extraction can be done to recover up to 98% of the oil as compared to 80 to 90% of oil from hydraulic or screw press expressions right the soya bean oil content is usually less so mechanical approach cannot uh, recover all of the oils whereas the solvent extraction method recovers almost up to 98% of the oil thus because of efficiency of oil yields by solvent extraction approach currently virtually all soya bean installations are solvent extraction based ones however combination of a mechanical and solvent extraction methods are also being adopted in several plants as well meal produced when solvent extraction method adopted contains around 44 to 46 percent so that's very high percent high protein percent is there if the protein percentage is very high so extraction by mechanical method is not possible that is the reason the extraction of soya bean oil by mechanical methods it gives only 80 to 90% of the oil okay because of this high protein content however this uh, protein content may be further increased by removing soya bean hulls these hulls are removed either before or after solvent extraction step if you are doing uh, this removal before the solvent extraction they are known as front end 
dehulling. If you are doing after the solvent extraction, the same is known as the tail end dehulling. In the front end dehulling, the process of dehulling is accomplished by screening the cracked sheet followed by removing the hull fraction by aspiration. Small meat particles are then separated from the hull stream on specific gravity separators, whereas tail end dehulling system entire dried meal stream is passed over specific gravity separators producing two grades of meal. What are those two grades of meal? One containing 41 percent protein, other one containing 50 percent protein. So, as already discussed and then shown in the flow sheet in the next slide, solvent extraction is carried out in a continuous counter current manner through series of extraction stages. Solvent from meal after extraction is recovered and recirculated over the flakes again so that to avoid the solvent losses. In buckets, these flakes are carried through the several extraction stages, pictorially we are seeing the same thing in the next slide anyway. Baskets may be moving in a circular, vertical or horizontal directions, vertical one is uh, shown in the next slide. Then milling releases some of the oil which is immediately dissolved in the solvent. However, greater portion of oil is removed by diffusion of solvent through the cells or uh, through the cell walls until the equilibrium is reached. Okay? Though the milling provides or, or releases some of the oil, it releases only some of the oil. Major of the oil content is obtained by the diffusion of solvent through the walls of the cells and to the meat and then extracting the oil. That occurs until the equilibrium is reached. Once equilibrium is reached, then what you can do? You can replace the equilibrium solution with a solvent having lower oil content because you are recycling it. When you recycle the solvent after uh, recovery or purification, you may not be having uh, completely pure solvent or you may not require also because you are reusing uh, as a kind of uh, you know solvent again within the process where the oil extraction is taking place. So, if the solvent is having some amount of oil, it is not going to be lost anyway. Otherwise, for every batch, if you are using a fresh NXN solution, it is not going to be economically a feasible process. So, the pictorially, the same process is shown here. Now, here we discuss in detail so that we can easily understand the things. Whatever the beans are there from the storage, you do the scaling and then pass through corrugated rolls or smooth rolls as per the requirement. Then uh, whatever the flaked seeds are there, you take to the bean heaters and then you pass through smooth flaking rolls. So, these are the corrugated ones whereas these are the smooth rolls. So, from here flakes you get which are having thickness 0.25 to 0.35 mm. So, when the thickness is so less, so then permeation of the solvent through the cell walls is going to be effective. So, these flakes or flaked oil seeds are taken to the top and then from the top they are dropped onto the buckets. Right? These buckets are moving because they are connected to two rolls which are rotating and then these two rolls are connected by a shaft or belt and then to the shaft these buckets are being connected. Uh, that means, these buckets are fixed to the shaft or rotating belt. right? So, then when this belt rotates, these buckets are also rotating ac accordingly. So, here what happens when the material comes, whatever the flaked seeds are there, they comes here to those buckets solvent, this, these solvents are also being supplied. So, let us say the material is coming here, solvent is provided here. Okay. The solvent is provided to the buckets in which you are taking you know the flaked seeds. 
So, then solvent extraction takes place and then this continues as it moves down up to this one. So, moment it comes here the uh, oil you know again it moves in the upward direction like this. So, the continuous process of uh, taking the flaked seeds and then supplying the hexane to the buckets continuously takes place. So, after uh, equilibrium has established then whatever the extractor is there from there micella is collected right. This micella is collected and then depending on its oil content and then NXN content if it is more in oil content then that you take to the rising film evaporator to remove the solvent from the micella and get pure oil or uh, you know you know finished solvent extracted oil. If the N-hexane content is more in the micella, then what you what you do? You try to pump the same thing to the buckets. From one side you feed the N-hexane, from the other side you feed the micella to the buckets. That depends on the composition of the micella. If the micella composition is rich in oil, then you take to the rising film evaporator, otherwise you do the recycling, that is the basic one. Whereas the after the extraction flakes are there, those flakes are taken to flake desolventizer toaster, right. Here what you try to do? You try to uh, supply the steam and then remove the solvent, remove the solvent here from here, right. Because out of these components of uh, you know flakes and then uh, extracted flakes out of the components hexane the, uh, the solvent that is the more volatile right. If you if that comes into interaction with the steam it will evaporate and then vapors would form and those vapors would be condensed and collected as a I know almost if not pure an hexane almost clear pure an hexane you get. Whereas from the bottom toasted meal you get which you can do the drying, cooling, grinding and then storage for and then use it as a different purpose because it is a toasted meal, okay. Other step let us say a micella if it is rich in the oil then you take to rising film evaporator. Here again you try to supply the energy by steam so that the evaporation takes place and then when the evaporation takes place. NXN is more volatile than the oil that is present in the micella. So, that would be that NXN would be uh, coming as a top product and then that would be condensed and collected as a solvent and then it will be taken to the water separation tank because whatever the solvent you get after the rising film evaporator that may also contain some water from where it is coming because this water is coming from the seeds, seeds may be having some contents of moisture. So, that may be joining with the solvent and then that has to be removed before recycling the solvent. After removing the water, uh, whatever the solvent is there that is taken to the solvent storage tank and then it is fed back again to the extractors as shown here. From the bottom of the rising film evaporator, what you get? You get a phase which is rich in oil. So, that you pump to vacuum stripping column to check if at all still an exane is present that would be evaporated and then condensed and then uh, mixed with the you know sol recovered solvent. Whereas, the oils which would be heavier product uh, they will be collected from the bottom of the vacuum stripping column and then taken to the oil storage tank. In this uh, flow sheet other thing to observe is these uh, notations like A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then F, G, H. These A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, these are streams what are their composition and then energy level etcetera those things are there. So, when you prepare a proper 
engineering or simplified engineering flow sheet, you have to give the proper material and energy balance also. So then for that purpose, you have this uh, labeling of streams like this and then you try to uh, write down what is the corresponding composition energy, etc. within the flow sheet. But however, it is not shown here. Now we see a few more details of the same process, so have been oil extraction by solvent extraction process. Best part of this process is the economical limit of this pressure which is about only 0.5 percent of oil remaining in the seed mass. Actually soya bean oil if, when you do the extraction in the seed the content of oil is very less compared to the other seeds around 40-45 percent only there, right. We, from there if you recover as much as possible it is going to beneficial and then that is the best part of this one. After solvent extraction in the remaining mass you get only 0.5 percent of oil. Diffusion rate is directly proportional to the surface area of the seed particles and it is inversely proportional to the power function of thickness with free circulation of the solvent. These numbers are coming from the engineering calculations of the process but that we are not doing in this course, that is not part of the course. Meal is toasted to increase its nutritive value, its nutri value after the extraction is completed. Since it is continuous process, solvent is removed from the micellar phase by passing it through a rising film evaporator followed by steam stripping column as just we have seen in the flow chart. For this purpose, double effect or dual evaporators are used. One is one evaporator operated under the vacuum and then heated by vapor from other stage or by vapor from the toaster. From economics point of view, solvent losses are minimized by venting the process non-condensable vapors through a refrigerated vent condenser or an oil absorption unit as we have seen in the flow chart. It is clearly shown in the flow chart. Thus produced process crude oil is stored for refining or sale purpose. On the other hand, dried and toasted meal from solvent extraction operation is ground to 10 to 12 mesh fines in a rotary pulverizer screen and stored for sale as feed. So this is all about the soya bean oil extraction. So we have seen specifically cotton seed oil production as well as the soya bean oil production. Now quickly we see couple of more which are similar process so we do not discuss by flow chart but we see important points of these uh, vegetable oils. Linseed oil, its production and refining are by a process similar to that used for cotton seed so we are not discussing in detail. About 40 percent is the average oil content with contribution about 34 percent by expression based on weight of seeds leaving about 6 percent oil in press cake. Thus, improved installations combining screw pressing with solvent extraction developed to reduce residual oil in the cake to about 0.75 percent only. When the oil content in the seed is less, so then it is better to make sure that as much as you can extract and then in the residual cake there should be negligible oil present. So that is possible when you do the combination of the process, that is combination of mechanical and then solvent extraction process. Since this already we discussed details, uh, flow sheet etc. are similar to cotton seed, we are not discussing again. Next is the coconut oil. Required raw material for production of coconut oil is brought in as copra, which is nothing but coconut kernel that has been shelled, cut up and heat dried. Why are we doing this one? We do actually this copra making at the point where the plants or trees are grown so that to reduce the transportation load. In the coconut, you usually see 40 to uh, 45 percent or more moisture content would be there, right. If you are transporting, you know, that is that moisture content is not contributing to the oil, right. So if you are transporting that entire one, so then you are unnecessarily paying uh, transportation charges for the 40 percent of that extra weight. So what you do, you try to remove that one there in the uh, plants growing stage only and then reduce that water content, moisture content as much as possible so that the transportation cost reduces. 
not only transportation cost, if you keep this wet coconut for long time without processing what will happen? You know deterioration of oil content will take place, right? So that is again not good, okay? So for because of both the reasons these are being you know uh, copra has been made at the uh, plants growing area only. Importance of copra can be further realized by comparing oil content, not, not only by the transportation and the deterioration of oil content in the wet stage uh, storage, but also other thing is that copra if you take around 65 to 70 percent oil content would be there. If you take the raw coconut only 30 to 40 percent oil content would be there in that one. Okay? Then the copra is expressed in expellers as we have already seen or screw presses by which a metric ton of copra yields around 800 kgs of oil and 365 kgs of the cake. Depending on quality of copra meats, this oil is refined and contains 1 to 12 percent of free fatty acid which is good for the as a cooking oil. Finally, only oil of low free fatty acid content is a, employed for uh, edible products whereas the rest remaining 60 percent of total receipts being used for production of soaps and alcohols in general. Next is the corn oil. Certain aspects of production of corn oil differs from that of some of the other oils that primarily in removing the gems. This is like a shell, this is like maybe corn uh, this thing. Now to this one these gems of the cons are there. They are you know uh, attached to the surface very strongly that removal is very difficult. So for that what you do? You do cooking or soaking in a uh, water container where SO2 is also provided, right? So that loosening of these gems uh, would take place. So on completion of conventional cleaning, corn is placed in large tanks and steeped in warm water containing SO2, thus loosening the hulls from kernels will take place. Once the loosening of hulls from the kernels takes place, you can do the attrition. Attrition is nothing but the rubbing uh, kind of action. So when you do this one, you know they can be uh, broke uh, which break the gem away from the rest of the kernel easily by this attrition. That is possible when you do this step, that is the important difference compared to the other processes. Then what you do? The mixture whatever is there, the gems and then kernel etc., you separate out. How you do separation? By running the mixture into a tank of water. Because of the density difference, gems are you know floating because of their oil contents and then oil content density is low, they will be floating and then they should be skimmed off. Right? So then what you do? You further do the drying etc., washing the gems and then thoroughly drying etc. is required before uh, taking them into the ordinary grinding and expelling operators as we have discussed for other oils productions. Then the crude oil is extracted by twin motor super duo expellers as explained earlier. This crude oil is then undergoes usual purification treatment as that described for cotton seed oil. However, oil content of corn kernel exclusive of hull is about 4.5 percent only. Usage of this oil is almost exclusively as a salad oil whereas the lower grades oil being used in soap manufacturing. Next is the palm oil. It is prepared from the fruits of the palm tree. This fruit is around 2.5 to 5 mm long and oval shaped. It weights about 6 to 8 grams on average. Oil content ranges around 40 to 50 percent of the kernel or seed because in the fruits also some oil is there. So in the palm oil not only from the fruit but also from the kernel and seed also you have to extract. Oil is obtained in two separate processes. In the first oil is removed from the fruit and in the second it is removed from the kernels or seeds. How it is done? The first procedure is done at the place where the fruit is grown because of the same reasons as in the case of uh, coconut oil production 
rather taking coconut you make them as copra at the plant site at the trees location and then do the other subsequent process same thing is done is here also but the process is slightly different what you do here here it includes the cooking fruit in large steam pressure digesters equipped with agitators then whatever the mixture is there wet meal is there that you do the centrifugation then from the steaming the charge goes to the basket centrifuges where 10 minutes treatment accompanied by blowing with a live stream separates the oil okay so that is the first step from the fruit how you get and then you preferably you do it at the plant location at the locations where the palm trees are uh, you know uh, present second process includes drying of residual fiber and kernels in a continuous rotary dryer and separated by screening then separated nuts or kernels are bagged and shipped where they are processed by the methods previously described for oil removal whether it is mechanical method or solvent extraction method in the first method you try to do where the plants are growing that because you are getting them from the fruits from the fruits what you do fruits you we are doing the digestion or cooking of the uh, fruit you are doing using the steam high pressure uh, steam digesters right whatever the uh, wet meal is coming out from the digester that you do the centrifugation when you do the centrifugation the oil separates out as a lighter phase heavier phase whatever cake is there that is separated out and then taken as a product this oil you can directly take to the further processing of hydrogenation etc if required second step because in the palm uh, oil it is not only the fruit but also hulls and then seeds are also used to get the oil so here what you do you do the drying of residual fiber and kernel in a continuous rotary dryer and separated by screening and then after that conventional mechanical or solvent extraction methods may be adopted based on the economic conditions fibers whatever are there they are usually taken as a solid fuel to the boilers of the first processing plant where from the fruit you are uh, taking you know oil from the fruit you are trying to get extraction whatever the first step is there for that purpose these fibers are used as a uh, solid fuel for the boilers used for the first pressure that is extraction of oil from the fruits so that is all about the uh, extraction of vegetable oils next is the processing of oils now here in this lecture we'll be seeing only the important steps of the processing oils whereas the details of each of the steps will be discussing in the next lecture if you see important steps of uh, processing of oils or common steps of processing of uh, vegetable oils include degumming and or steam refining adsorptive bleaching hydrogenation and deodorization okay we stop our today's lecture here and then details of each of these steps we are going to discuss in the next lecture the references for today's lecture are provided here outlines of chemical technology by dryden edited and revised by gopal rao and marshall third edition chemical process industries by austin and shreve fifth edition encyclopedia of chemical technology kirk and atmar fourth edition unit processes in organic synthesis by grogins fifth edition thank you